Hi there, I'm Duncan Hughes, and welcome to this overview of Ethan Hathaway's Global Commodities Markets programme. This intensive online programme has been designed for busy commodities and supply chain professionals looking to update their knowledge regarding, regarding commodities markets and the profound changes that they are undergoing, many of which have been expedited by the COVID-19 pandemic. The programme covers all of the major commodity markets and how they interact, and particularly with respect to common risk factors. Even before the onset of the recent pandemic, global commodities markets were already undergoing seismic changes. COVID-19 and the potential for a severe recession are likely to exacerbate underlying, ge exacerbate underlying geopolitical tensions and accelerate these changes. Economic fragmentation resulting from trade wars and increasing polarization of geopolitical alignment with the US or China is resulting in regionalization of supply chains and the development of localized commodities markets. The diminishing role of the World Trade Organization against the backdrop of China's One Belt One Road initiative is one formal factor, but long-term bilateral agreements are also increasingly critical as governments seek to ensure security of supply of key foodstuffs, energy and materials. The Chinese economy is evolving from exports of low-cost basic manufactured goods to one in which firms produce value-added and technologically advanced goods and services, which are increasingly developed for the domestic Chinese market. One corollary of this is that other Southeast Asian nations, such as Vietnam, are taking over China's, China's role in basic manufacturing, resulting in changes to the flow of commodity inputs. Environmental, social and governments issues have been talked about with little real action being taken in most countries for many decades. However, going forward, while there is something of a schism between, for example, the European Union and most of the rest of the world on ESG issues, they are nonetheless now an only important factor in countries where pollution of air and water systems is clearly having a social and economic impact. We also look at the very real effects of inequality and technological advance on supply chains and commodity demand patterns. The programme comprises five modules, providing delegates with a comprehensive understanding of the principal commodities markets, as well as the macro background key interrelationships and principal analytical frameworks used in commodity pricing in commodity pricing and risk management. In contemporary global commodities markets, we look at the overall shape of the market and the risks and technical factors that drive pricing, as well as longer term issues such as the environmental, social and governance considerations that are nonetheless affecting market now. In the agricultural commodities module, we look in detail at the key staple foodstuff products, including wheat, maize, rice and palm oil, and also at luxury commodities such as coffee and cocoa. In energy markets, we cover the principal sources of global energy, energy oil, coal and natural gas, and examine the key risk factors, including their inter-substitutability, that drive market pricing and hedging dynamics. In the metals module, we look at the major base metals such as copper, steel and aluminium, as well as precious metals including gold, silver and the platinum group, and also how these markets are evolving in the light of technological advance and environmental objectives. The final module focuses more on the ongoing evolution of international supply and value chains, as well as alternative commodity types and power sources that are supplanting traditional products.
In the Contemporary Global Commodities Markets module, we start off by looking at the macro conditions impacting global commodities markets, including the fragmentation of supply chains and supply chains and the regionalization of value chains against the backdrop of the US-China trade war and the more general bifurcation of the global policy along Western and Chinese affiliatory lines. We then cover the key skills required for in-depth commodity market analysis. In particular, we review forward curve dynamics, including contango and normal backwardation, as well as the implications of these phenomena for understanding market dynamics, such as expected supply conditions, inventory levels, and the outlook for demand. Finally, in this module, we look at the key extraneous factors which are increasingly important in commodities markets and the supply chains to which they relate. ESG factors affect all global commodities markets and supply chains, but not equally. In some countries, for example, restrictions on pollution are far more stringent than in others. The availability of usable land, water and sand is becoming a global issue as domestic supplies are decreasingly able to fulfil local demand in fundamental processes such as mineral extraction, construction and agriculture. In the agriculture module, we take a detailed look at the principal commodity basic foodstuffs, including wheat, maize, rice, livestock and palm oil, as well as luxury products such as cocoa, sugar and coffee. Other agricultural products, important in basic materials, such as wool, cotton and rubber, are covered in Module 5. We also look at the alternative markets for agri-commodities such as maize and soybean use in animal feed as well as in consumer food products and also the competing use of these products in biofuel production. We review other key issues that agricultural commodities are highly dependent upon including weather factors such as rainfall, sunshine and temperature but also in the longer term on the availability of land, water and fertiliser. We also look at the policies of governments in poorer countries who have frequently intervened in strategic product markets such as rice and wheat and often carry large emergency reserves as well as directly capping prices. Finally, we cover the increasingly important ESG considerations such as deforestation and discuss the likely secular impact for markets such as livestock and palm oil. The energy market module covers the three principal sources of global energy – crude oil, coal and natural gas. Crude oil remains the most important energy source for transportation fuels such as gasoline and diesel. And diesel. Coal is actually still the principal source of energy for electricity generation in China, the US and India as well as other nations. Natural gas is increasingly important in power generation as a cleaner substitute for coal. Other sources of energy which compete with these commodities are explored in Module 5. We examine the value and supply chains in global energy markets and highlight the key pressure points such as cost increase risks and in transportation networks such as the Straits of Hormuz in the Gulf. For transportation fuels, we analyse the entire process from upstream exploration and production through transportation and refining to downstream activities such as marketing of refined products. For coal and gas, we examine the issues relating to extraction and the logistical risks and costs associated with transportation. We also look at other hydrocarbon products such as petrochemicals and the value and supply chains involved in the creation of products such as plastics and ammonia-based fertilizer. Finally in this module we look at the principal energy benchmarks such as Brent Crude, West Texas Intermediates and in oil markets, 
Henry Hub for natural gas, as well as the emerging LNG benchmarks, as well as those for the principal international coal markets. Particularly given the increasing fragmentation of markets, we assess the impact of the costs and risks of local and international transportation on market pricing. The metals module covers all of the key base and precious metals and looks at the evolution of their use against the background of technological advance across most industrial bases. In base metals, copper remains one of the most important one of the most important metal commodities. Although its role in traditional electrical connectivity applications has been diminished, it is increasingly used in new technologies such as solar panel and wind farms and continues to be a key component in construction. Aluminium's applications have expanded beyond its traditional role in packaging and aircraft manufacturing to be more widely used in transportation vehicles of all types, particularly in developed nations. Although steel has been increasingly supplanted by aluminium in recent years, it remains an important core material in construction and in vehicle manufacturing, particularly in emerging markets. In precious metal markets, gold remains an important store of value in large economies such as China and India and remains a significant currency held by central banks, but also in developing economies. Silver has experienced something of a resurgence via photovoltaic applications, whilst the platinum group metals are extensively used to convert harmful gases emitted from engines. Other metals which are important in today's world, such as cobalt, lithium and rare earth elements, are covered in Module 5. We look in detail at the value and supply chains of the principal metal commodities, including the importance of energy in, amongst others, aluminium and steel production. The module also focuses on the, on the evolving use of materials in construction, which is resulting in metals commodities such as aluminium, copper and steel becoming fragmented along the lines of nations' relative wealth and their stage of economic development. Environmental, social and governance issues are particularly important in metals markets and represent an increasing risk to production costs and commodity prices. From an environmental perspective, mineral deposit mining and metal extraction from ores is extremely detrimental, whether via electrolysis, heating with carbon or via leaching. Social issues have arisen in situations in which miners have been poorly paid and where local environments, including water sources, have been harmed. Governance continues to be problematical in many host nations of mining operations against increasingly stringent codes proscribing bribery of foreign officials in the European Union, for example, although controls are less restrictive elsewhere. In Module 5, we take a holistic view of global supply chains and the challenges that they will face going forward, particularly in the light of geopolitical and trade tensions, as well as increasing constraints due to tightening ESG regulation in many parts, in many parts of the world. We begin by analysing other important commodities markets not covered thus far, such as rare earth elements, cobalt and lithium in metals markets, other materials such as cotton and rubber, as well as alternative sources of power incl including hydro, geothermal, nuclear, solar and wind, and the commodity inputs that these sources require. We then move on to specific case studies including construction materials, vehicle production and food supply chains, with a particular focus on sources of commodity input price risk and key value chain pressure points. 
We also review commodities markets from the perspective of key forward-looking themes, such as technological advance in the form of smart buildings and power grids, and in combination with environmental protection. And we assess the prospects for potentially winning and losing commodities against this backdrop. We also look at the likely fragmentation of markets along the lines of technological sophistication and environmental objectives. We conclude by highlighting opportunities as well as risks in global supply chains and commodities markets by examining the alternatives available to market players in building businesses that are sustainable from an economic perspective as well as environmentally and socially. So looking at the key takeaways from the programme, the overall objective is to equip professionals to manage an increasingly uncertain future, particularly given geopolitical tensions and the ramifications for trade flows. We do, we do this by providing a deep understanding of value and supply chains, identifying key pressure points and enabling professionals to develop more robust and resilient supply chains. We focus on the course in terms of risk management analysis and the resources that we need to carry out that analysis. And we also look at pricing dynamics across different time frames. In the short term, looking at technical factors and the supply and demand and inventory levels that relate to them. In the medium term, we look at supply adaptation, substitutability across different products, and the logistics constraints that we might face in terms of transportation. In the longer term, of course, we may well see further structural shifts in supply and demand, particularly across the different lines that are now being drawn between US-centric and China-centric trade flows. So overall, we're looking to give our delegates a holistic supply chain knowledge and analytical skill base to enable them to manage risk much more effectively. So what's the return on your investment in this Ethan Hathaway Commodity Training Programme? We're providing professionals with a deep understanding of the global commodity complex. This will enable them, enable them to synthesize short-term market action with longer-term factors. The benefit will be avoiding costly knee-jerk reaction to situations and with professionals taking a more balanced view. It will also enable managers to create more effective teams to manage the firm's risk exposure to, for example, changes in commodity pricing. It also provides the knowledge and skills for professionals to create more robust and resilient supply chains in the world of commodities. For example, by entering into longer term offtake agreements where appropriate and available, and also building redundancy into supply chains where these sources are potentially fragile. And overall, enabling professionals to optimise short and medium term risk strategy. So, for example, by adopting a more dynamic approach to inventory management, by managing residual risk using hedging and derivatives instruments, but really with more of a focus on overall firms' earnings rather than just individual commodity input factors.